Welcome to this video where we will learn how to calculate the likelihood and the deviance from a logistic regression model. We will first discuss how to calculate the likelihood, then we will briefly discuss the maximum likelihood method and learn how to calculate the deviance. At the end of this video we will calculate McFadden's pseudo r squared value based on the deviance. We'll here practice to calculate the likelihood and the deviance based on the exact same dataset as we used in the basic lecture about logistic regression. This dataset consists of prostate-specific antigen concentrations in blood from 7 patients with prostate cancer and 7 healthy controls. We can plot the data like this, where the cancer patients are coded as 1s and the healthy controls as zeros. We then estimated the parameters B0 and B1 based on the data. By using a statistical software tool, the parameters B0 and B1 were estimated to negative 5.754 and 2.747. If you plug in these coefficients in the equation, we can draw this curve that shows the predicted probability to have cancer over a range of different PSA concentrations. Based on this function, we can calculate the predicted probabilities for each person in the dataset. For example, if we plug in a PSA value of 2.1 in this equation, we see that the model would predict that the person with a PSA level of 2.1 as prostate cancer is about 50%. Note that these probabilities are valid only for the persons in our dataset. We'll obtain the same probability if we draw a vertical line from the data point to the curve, and then a horizontal line from the curve to the y-axis. This horizontal line will intercept the y-axis at 0.5. We'll use these predicted probabilities to calculate the likelihood and the deviance. However, before we do that, we must first discuss the binomial distribution and how it is connected to logistic regression. Logistic regression is sometimes referred to as binomial logistic regression because the response variable is assumed to follow binomial distribution. What we see here is the binomial probability mass function, which can be used to calculate the probability of serving k successes out of n trials, where p is the probability of success for a single trial. For example, we can use this function to calculate the probability to get two heads out of five coin tosses. Note that the order of the heads and tails does not matter. Since we use a fair coin, there is a 50-50 chance of getting either heads or tails. P is therefore set to 0.5 in this example. Since we like to calculate the probability to get two heads out of five trials, we set k to 2 and n to 5. If we plug in these values in the function and do the math, we'll get a probability of about 31.2%. The probability to get just one head out of five trials is about 15.6%. And the probability to get no heads out of five trials is about 3.1%. These bars therefore represent the binomial distribution for five trials where the probability for a success is 50%. So what has all this got to do with logistic regression? Remember from my previous data set that we coded the health controls as zeros and the prostate cancer patients as ones. We can think of each data point as one trial. This term of the function is calculated like this. Since we can think that logistic regression only involves one trial, we can set n to 1. If we set n to 1, k can either be 1 or 0. Since the factorial of 0 or 1 is equal to 1, we see that this term is equal to 1 when n is equal to 1. We can therefore eliminate this term, so that the binomial probability function can be simplified to this function 
when we use logistic regression. In this special case, where n is equal to 1, the distribution is called a Bernoulli distribution. If the probability is equal to 0 0.5, the Bernoulli distribution looks like this. If you flip a fair coin only once, the probability to get tail is 50%, and the probability to get head is also 50%. Instead of heads or tails, we can use this distribution to calculate the probability of observing a healthy individual or an individual with cancer based on some data. The Bernoulli distribution will therefore be used to calculate the likelihood of our logistic regression model. The likelihood is calculated as the product of all the individual probabilities computed by our logistic regression model. We will now calculate the likelihood based on our example data. P sub i is the probability, according to the logistic regression model, that someone has cancer. Y sub i in our example is a variable with ones and zeros, where one represents that the data point comes from a cancer patient and zero represent that the data point comes from a healthy control group. Let's begin by calculating the probabilities according to the Bernoulli probability function. We plug in the probability according to the logistic regression and set y sub i to 1 since the data point comes from a cancer patient. Since the exponent becomes 0, this part is therefore equal to 1. The probability, according to the Bernoulli function, is therefore equal to the probability that the person has cancer when y sub i is equal to 1. Let's add 0 0.99 in our table. Since y sub i is equal to 1 for these data points as well, we simply copy these probabilities from this column. We'll now calculate the corresponding probability for this row where y sub i is now 0 because it is a row associated with the healthy control group. We plug in the predicted probability from the logistic regression model and set y sub i to 0. We see that this part is equal to 1 since the exponent is equal to 0 and that this part is equal to 1 minus 0 0.75. The probability, according to Bernoulli distribution, is therefore simply just 1 minus the probability that the person has prostate cancer according to the logistic regression model. This value therefore represents the probability that the person is healthy. 1 minus 0 0.44 is 0 0.56, and 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75, and so forth. We are now ready to calculate the likelihood. The likelihood is simply the product of all these probabilities. The likelihood is calculated to about 0 0.005155. Note that this value has been calculated based on more exact values in the software and not on the rounded probabilities in this table. However, the problem when calculating the product of the probabilities is that the likelihood gets very small. Imagine if we instead would have 100 data points, then we would have got a super small value. This is one of the reasons why the log likelihood is calculated instead. If we calculate the natural logarithm of the likelihood, we see that the log likelihood is equal to negative 5.268. According to the logarithmic laws, the log likelihood can also be calculated by summing the log of the individual probabilities. In summary, these are the values for the likelihood and the log likelihood of our proposed model, where we use the PSA concentration to predict if someone has prostate cancer or not. We'll now briefly discuss the method of maximum likelihood which is used to estimate the parameters in logistic regression. By using a statistical software, logistic regression estimated the parameters b0 and b1 for the following function. 
These coefficients are the ones that result in maximum likelihood of the model. Let's say that we were tested a range of different values of B1 between 2.3 and 3.3 and calculated the likelihoods exactly as we did previously. Then we can see how the likelihood changes as a function of the value of the parameter B1. For example, if we would set B1 to 2.6, the likelihood is equal to about 0 0.0047. The logistic regression model estimates the parameter B1 to 2.747 because with this value the model results in maximum likelihood. The same is also true for the log likelihood. We see that if B1 is set to 2.747 we get maximum log likelihood. The maximum log likelihood is negative 5.268. We'll now calculate the corresponding log likelihood of the null model. A null model is a model with no explanatory variables. The null model is therefore basically just a model with an intercept. If we fit the null model to the data, B0 will be estimated to 0. e to the power of 0 is equal to 1. We see that the null model predicts the probability for cancer to 50% for all individuals since the PSA level is no longer included in the equation. The null model therefore represents a horizontal line in this plot at 0.5. Since we have an equal sample size of the two groups, the null model predicts the probability that someone has cancer to 50%. According to the null model, all the probabilities are 0.5 and the probabilities according to the Bernoulli probability function are therefore also 0.5. The likelihood of the null model is therefore 0 0.000061. And the log likelihood of the null model is negative 9.704. To summarize, these are the values of the likelihood and the log likelihood of the null model. We'll now calculate the corresponding log likelihood of the so-called saturated model. A saturated model is a model where the fitted values are equal to the observed values. The predicted probabilities for the cancer cases are therefore 1. Whereas the predicted probabilities for the healthy individuals are zero. The probabilities according to Bernoulli probability function are therefore equal to one for all the data points. The likelihood of the saturated model is thereby equal to one. Since the natural logarithm of one is zero, the log likelihood of the saturated model is equal to zero. In summary, these are our log likelihoods for the three models. If our proposed model is a good model that explains the data, the log likelihood should be as high as possible. If our proposed model fits almost perfectly to the data, it will have a log likelihood close to the saturated model. And if our model does not explain the data well, it will have a log likelihood close to the null model which is a model with no explanatory variables. Once we have worked out the log likelihoods for all three models, we are ready to calculate the deviance. The null deviance is two times the log likelihood difference between the saturated and the null model. The residual deviance is two times the log likelihood difference between the saturated and the proposed model. Since the log likelihood of the saturated model in logistic regression is equal to zero, we can eliminate this term from the two equations. We can therefore simplify the null deviance as two times the negative log likelihood of the null model, and the residual deviance as two times the negative log likelihood of the proposed model. If we begin the log likelihood of the null model, we see that the null deviance is equal to 19.41.
And if you plug in the log likelihood of the proposed model, we see that the residual deviance is equal to 10.54. A good model should have as low residual deviance as possible relative to the null deviance. In our case, the residual deviance is much lower than the null deviance. In the next lecture, we'll see how we can use either a likelihood ratio test or calculate the AAC value to compare two models. Before we end this lecture, we'll see how we can calculate McFadden's pseudo R squared value once we have worked out the null and the residual deviance. It is called pseudo R squared because it's not calculated based on the sum of squared errors as in linear regression. Instead, it is based on the ratio of the residual deviance and the null deviance. If we begin the deviances, we see that the pseudo R squared value is 0 0.46. Since a good model should have a much lower deviance compared to the null deviance, the pseudo R squared value should be close to 1 for a good model. Note that, since the deviance is simply calculated by multiplying the log likelihood by a factor of 2, we'll get the same result if we instead calculate the pseudo R squared value based on the ratio of the log likelihoods. This was the end of this lecture about how we can calculate the likelihood and deviance. In the next lecture, we'll use the likelihood and the deviance to compare models by the likelihood ratio test and by using the IC value.